Hello, I'm Fred Everett, and this is my wife, Lisa, and we co-direct the Office of Family Life for the Diocese of Fort Wayne South Bend in Indiana. And among the various things that we do, we try to help families build up a spiritual life, especially in the area of prayer. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Fred and I, just on a personal note, we've been married 25 years and have been blessed with seven children who are now a young adult down to a middle schooler. And over the years, we've tried some things in praying as a family that have worked better than others, uh, like many things in family life. And so what we'd like to share with you today are three kind of forms of family prayer that have worked well in our family and we think um, can work well in yours and really do a lot to build your closeness as a family and also your closeness as a family with Christ. Developing an intimate relationship can be a very rewarding, very joy-filled thing, but it's not always easy. The same is true with our relationship with Christ. We need to really get to know Him, to know who He really is, and we can do that through the Gospels. As parents, we can help our children really get to know Christ on a more intimate basis by really delving into the stories of the Gospels. And one of the great ways to do that is through this method called the Ignatian Method of Contemplative Prayer. Helping our children to be able to understand who Jesus is can really then help them to become the Christians we want them to be. You know, at the heart of any close relationship is really intimate conversation, not the kind of one word answers and questions we sometimes exchange with each other in family life and sometimes find harder to get more than that out of our children, but the kind of what we might call heart-to-heart -heart conversations that sometimes are few and far between but can be very rewarding and meaningful. And so what we want to try to do as a family is foster those kinds of conversations heart-to-heart -heart between our children and Christ. And this sometimes is a challenging thing to do. Sometimes it's challenging even in our own lives. One particular method of doing this was developed and fostered by St. Ignatius of Loyola, who, who knew, as we know, that one of the main ways that Christ speaks to us is through Scripture, and in fact, the stories that are recorded in all four Gospels. So this method of prayer that I think you might find very fruitful in your own family, as we have in ours, is to begin by choosing a Bible story, um, one of the encounters of Christ with someone in the scriptures. Perhaps it's particularly meaningful to you, or you might choose something like the Gospel of the Day, which you can find online in various ways uh, through a resource like Magnificat magazine, or even a children's Bible, which if your children are very young, I would recommend. And so what you want to do is invite your children to close their eyes while you are going to read aloud one of these stories very slowly and with feeling to help your children enter with their imaginations into the scene. And this is a great method for children because most children very easily use their imaginations and so we're kind of directing that gift of theirs to becoming closer to Christ and entering into the gospel scene. So let's say on a given day you pick the story of Zacchaeus. Okay? And if you're familiar with it, just even retell the story perhaps in your own words. And so you want to invite your children to use all of their senses and imagine themselves in the scene, either as one of the participants or maybe just as an onlooker of the scene. You want to have them imagine Jesus, who has a reputation for being a miracle worker, coming to this little village. The crowds are gathering. And there's a small man, a man of short stature, who understandably can't see over the crowd. And your children, who are small, understand what it's like not to be able to see in any number of kinds of situations. And so he does something audacious for a grown man. He climbs a tree, a sycamore tree. And despite the vastness of the crowd, Jesus comes and singles him out and speaks to him. And this man who was known as a sinner in the community, he was a tax collector and known for cheating the people, Jesus singles him out and speaks to him very lovingly, looks at him with love and says, in fact, Zacchaeus, I am coming to your house today. So you're retelling the story or perhaps reading it from a children's Bible. And then you invite the children to imagine themselves as Zacchaeus himself. And Jesus looks at them with love as he looked at Zacchaeus with love and says to them as he said to Zacchaeus, I am coming to your house today. So Jesus has initiated that conversation with them. And then what would they say in the, the childlikeness of their hearts to Jesus in response? What would they feel? Okay. Um, in fact, we know Jesus does come to our house each and every day because he promised that wherever two or three of us are gathered in his name, he is there. 
And so invite your child to respond. You know, is there anything they would change about how they talk to their brothers and sisters if Jesus were coming to dinner? Would they take down any posters in their room or, or make sure the history on their computer was cleared? Or make sure the TV shows that they are tempted to watch or sometimes do watch behind their parents' back <clears throat> would no longer be there for Jesus to see? What would we have to do? What should we do to change and to become the kind of people who we would be happy and not embarrassed to have Jesus over for dinner? Something to that effect. Um, another line of reflection might be, you know, how willing are we sometimes to do something bold or audacious like Zacchaeus did to get closer to Jesus, to get a better look, so to speak, at him? Sometimes we're so concerned about what other people think and we would just want to fit in and follow the crowd. Are we willing, like Zacchaeus, despite his sins, right, are we willing to do something courageous and bold to tell Jesus, to show Jesus that we want a better look at him? We want to get closer to him and that we're willing, like Zacchaeus, to set aside whatever there might be in our life that has drawn us away not only from other people but from him. So you see how this method is really then a way to use your children's imagination with a guided meditation that you can help, you know, prepare them for a conversation that is a springboard for sharing heart to heart with Christ. And then have them at the end invite them to really be silent, and that's not an easy thing in our culture, just to even have literally 30 seconds or a minute of silence. It's longer than you think, and it, your children might think it's interminable at first. Um, to just see then how does Jesus reply to what they've just shared about um, this situation, about what the story of Zacchaeus has evoked in their own hearts. And to just see how Christ replies in the silence of their own hearts, to just kind of rest and be still in his presence would be the final part of this method of prayer. And again, it takes some getting used to, as many things in family life that we introduce that our kids aren't used to doing, but um, I think you will find that after a while, you'll see that they'll, they'll close their eyes on their own, and you know that they are really having a conversation in that silence with Christ. And there's no more beautiful gift we can give our children than that, because one day we won't be there uh, to foster this form of family prayer, but hopefully we will have given them a relationship and some tools to keep nurturing that relationship so that they can have that for the rest of their life and that will bear fruit, you know, I'm sure far beyond we can, what we can imagine right now. What the Ignatian method really helps us to accomplish as parents is not only to help our children think about the issues raised by a particular gospel story, but to really enter into it through the heart. In other words, how do you feel by being in this scene? How do you think Jesus feels? How do you think the people who are around watching the interplay between Zacchaeus and Jesus feel? And by doing that, that's really the source of building that, that sense of intimacy with Christ that we really want to give to our children. Because we can tell them the teachings of the church on this issue or that issue, but the final question is, does it really resonate in their heart? Does Jesus really mean, a, 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 is he really a, really a close personal friend of theirs? And that's what we really want to accomplish as parents, is to help them have that friendship with Christ. In closing, we'd like to share with you some words from Pope Benedict XVI that he shared with young people when he came to visit the United States back in 2008. And this is what he said. What matters most is that you develop your personal relationship with God. That relationship is expressed in prayer. God, by his very nature, speaks, hears, and replies. Far from turning in on ourselves or withdrawing from the ups and downs of life, by praying, we turn toward God and through him to each other.